Welcome back to Talking College Baseball. I am your host, Chris Barber. I'm joined by my co-host, Joe Sparber. And today, our guest, it's a very unique day. <laughs> we have not only got a third-round pick to the Arizona Diamondbacks right here, Jack Hurley. What's up, guys? Accompanied by him is his girlfriend, <laughs> Katie Feeney. Hey, we are guys. excited to have you guys on today. Um, obviously, we've been waiting to do this for a long time, and you know, we're, we're pumped to have you on. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Joe, for having us on. Sir, it's exciting you, making the trip all the way from State College. <laughs> or from <freaking> New Jersey. <laughs> New Jersey to State College. That's yeah, I went about a four-hour drive. You know, it wasn't too bad, but, you know, we're pumped to be out here. All right. So, like all of our podcasts, we start off from the beginning, right? Where did the love of the game start for you? Who taught you baseball? And why you enjoy playing? So I've been playing for a real long time. Uh, my dad, he was a big influence on me. Uh, baseball runs in the family. He played at Penn State. I wanted to be just like dad. Uh, so I followed in his footsteps. He has taught me a lot and pretty much everything I know about the game. So, uh, yeah, he introduced me at a young age to baseball. And since there, I fell in love with it. And you know, that's why I play. Oh, that's great. I mean, that's a lot of people that we have on. They say, you know, they're their dad or, you know, an influence really pushed them to, to be the player they are today. Um, now, with that question, we're going to ask Katie a similar question on what she does, which, you know, I'm sure most of people are going to be watching know what Katie does, but we're going to give a little introduction, a little bit more for Katie. Katie, tell everyone exactly what you do and, and why you do it. Yeah, so I started playing baseball. So I am a social media content creator. I started in middle school, actually, just with my friends for fun. Never took it too seriously. Then my junior year of high school was when quarantine began. I had a lot of extra time on my hands. So I really just amplified the content I was already creating and I started posting these unboxing videos and just like other fun creative things I was doing in my home at the time and my account really started to take off and it at that point I was like okay this is this is a little more serious now maybe it could become something bigger and I started getting brand opportunities and I turned what I was doing for fun into a business. And since then I have expanded more into sports and hopefully we'll continue down that route as my career in the future. Well, I mean, that's completely different than playing baseball. <laughs> us three right here, baseball has been everything for us. Right. And I think that now that, you know, social media is such an influence in the world, there's so many opportunities out there for for not only like athletes and just like, like you said, someone who, you know, never even thought of being like a college athlete, right? And now you talk to college athletes a lot. You obviously go to the Penn State games every week, uh, even the professional teams you, you talk with. So now you're in the sports world from social media. So I think it's really unique. Would you say so? Yeah, I definitely agree. It all ties in together. So it's really cool. And anyway, next, Jack. Okay, so now that you're introduced into baseball, right? Your dad was your influence. You start playing middle school or baseball in middle school, right? Mm -hmm. And what other things like influenced you to become a better baseball player? Obviously, mm -hmm. you're playing baseball for fun at this point, but mm -hmm. um, what influenced you to become like a really, really talented baseball player? I mean, you can definitely attest to this guy. I know this guy. Uh, getting in the gym, uh, being motivated, I think it just – Playing baseball gives you something to work towards and working out and bettering yourself. I think that's kind of like where it all started. Obviously, I wanted to be a really good baseball player, but it gave me something to work really hard at. Um, and like both these guys did, they can do, they did the same thing. So um, just working hard uh, and then just trying to become the best baseball player is what motivated me. Were you always a baseball player? Or did you want to like did you do other sports growing <clears throat> up? Like basketball I think like or anything? yeah, I played basketball in high school. Played a little bit of football, was QB1 for a little bit in 8th grade or 7th grade. Uh, but it was kind of like early on, whatever sport I was playing was my favorite. And okay. then and then as I got to high school, 
I realized baseball was going to be my thing, so I worked a little bit harder at it. Hit the gym a little harder, swung more, and now, now we're here. Did you give up on the other sports in high school, or did you keep playing them throughout? Like, <clears throat> so I played, I played basketball my my senior year of high school, right before COVID. And the only reason I played was because my mom told me that <clears throat> if I played basketball, because she really wanted me to, that I could wake up and go to this place called Toasted and State College, get a bagel every morning um, if I played basketball. So I did it for like a little bit of speed training, and then mm-hmm. I also was decent at it, so I played a lot and had a good time. Um, but I also got free breakfast out of playing basketball with my senior year. All right. Whatever every, every morning, whenever I, I it, was, it was sick. It was like, go to the Toasted and get, get a $6 bagel. It was pretty fun. Whatever the motivator is, right? Yeah, I mean, now that pushed me. You know what? I gotta say, those things that you just said right there, a lot of people say, hey, hard work and get in there, but I gotta be honest with you. There's there's something different when it comes to people that play elite baseball. Would you say it's it's more than hard work? Yeah. It There's something that just drives them internally. And I think that, uh, I think you have that. You know, obviously, getting to the level you're at, it, do, it takes more than hard work. And it, it's really hard to explain right? Like what that fire really mm-hmm. that pushes you every day to do it because it's, you know, baseball is the same thing every day, right? Like there's no, there's no uh, changing that up. It's the same thing every day. And I think it's staying consistent, right? Mm-hmm. Would you say obviously. staying consistent with not just like, obviously people say you got to stay consistent at the bat, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be a consistent hitter, but it's more than being a consistent hitter. I think it starts from what your training is. You have to be consistent every day where you're training. Would you say so? Like, if you wake up every day, you know that you got to do your weights. You know mm-hmm. you got to do speed training. You know you got to do hitting, fielding, throwing. You know you have to do all these things in order to be that consistent, yeah. hit, consistent player. Yeah. And I think it was like, like you guys said, is one kind of you develop that. It was definitely in high school you develop like, oh, you want to do this, like you got to do this. So you work hard. You hit the gym. You throw. You hit. You do it consistently for a long period of time, and it's gonna pay off. I mean. Hard work pays off. It's not a quote for yeah for some unknown reason. I mean, I agree. I think that even any avenue in life, I would say, hard work, consistency, consistency, mm-hmm. consistency. For example, Katie, to be someone that is an influence on on social media, right? An influencer. What is the best thing to do? Right, is be consistent. Yeah. Right. I mean, posting every day, and I think that's not only on like one platform. So my largest platform was TikTok and I posted on it when it was musically, but then I had to expand to every single platform. So I post like five times a day on YouTube and I try to post once or twice a day on Instagram. And I post way too many times on Snapchat. I probably post close to like between 50 and 70 times every day on Snapchat, but it's doing that every single day. And then eventually you'll start to build up that momentum and people will start noticing you. You can't take a long period of time. I mean, you can post once every other day, but if and you, if you do that consistent, consistently, then people will like still be intrigued by what you're posting. But if you take a break, there's so many other people doing it. So you have to do something that makes you stand out. See, so I mean, honestly, it's just whatever. Like, I don't really care what you're doing, right? It doesn't matter what you're doing in life. Like it's consistency every single day. When you first started, you just said you posted five times a day on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you first started, be honest, did you have a lot of views when you first started? No, it took a while for me to, I always struggled growing on YouTube and Instagram. And for a while I was like, okay. And like I did long form YouTube videos, they weren't going anywhere. So I just stopped completely. And then When YouTube Shorts came out, that's when I started really trying to stick to a schedule. And even when I wasn't getting any views, I was still posting every single day. And then one day I started getting views and then I started gaining subscribers and it just kept going on like that. And once you catch a little bit of momentum, then you just got to carry with it. And I mean, even posting more, I think I started posting like probably 10 times. (laughs) You see, I mean, but that's... I'm like like once a six months. (laughs) That's what I'm at, too. Maybe every two years. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, it's very similar to, um, very similar to baseball, where, you know, if, when you first start off in baseball, right, it's, you're consistently grinding. You're you're grinding, you're going to see your, put yourself out there in front of coaches and stuff, but you may not be getting the views and the looks that you're looking for, right? But you keep going to the gym every day. You keep 
hitting in the cages. It's like our posts. It's like the going same to the thing. gym. Literally. That's, that's like our that's like like post. Be consistent. People may not be watching yet, but when they do and you get that momentum, like Katie said, you run with it. Once you have a name in baseball and you start consistent, people are starting to watch, everything takes off from there. And that's exactly what happened with you. Mm-hmm. I want you to explain to us when you went to um, – when you first went to Virginia Tech, obviously you're in a position where you weren't getting those views, mm. right? But now you were, you know, you're still working hard. You get to college, and you're just kind of you're rolling with it. I mean, where where did everything go? I mean, obviously before even college, like even in high school, you get there, you're not getting the, you're not getting, you know, looks yet. You're in high school, and where did everything start turning? Yeah, when the page start turning. That you became like a recruited player. Um, it was probably my sophomore year, and I I always felt like I was kind of like like a little bit slept on because I was smaller. I was like a smaller build. I had like really fast hands and stuff, but like I wasn't very big, so I didn't hit the ball hard. So that's whenever I started getting serious in the gym. Um, and uh, it was easy to take that like underdog mentality and like use it in the gym or like hit extra or do extra work because, I mean. It's just fun to be the underdog. So whenever I was a sophomore in high school, I was a small kid, and it motivated me a little bit extra. And that kind of pushed me into Virginia Tech, got me an awesome opportunity with them. And then I'd say my after my freshman year, I made some pretty big jumps um, just after experience and being able to play in the ACC for a year and adjust into my sophomore year. And then I started to get some good traction and um, felt like I was getting those like views and stuff, uh, looks and stuff from scouts. and after my sophomore year, I just used that momentum, like kind of Katie said, like just used the momentum and kept going um, and pushed myself to work even harder in the gym and it all paid off. Yeah, that's really cool. Now you say you have an intrinsic uh, motivator being like you're smaller in high school mm-hmm. and in- extrinsically toasted bagels in the morning with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, what about you? What drives you both either way? Like what made you want to become like an influencer? Um, I really had no intention on doing this like long term when I was posting in high school, I also didn't realize that it was something that you could do long term because at the time it really, I mean, no one was doing it at least in the short form um, space, but I've always been a very hard worker and I love pushing myself beyond what I think I'm able to accomplish. And I mean, I have been blessed with so many incredible opportunities going to my first Super Bowl, my first like NFL game other than the one I attended when I was like six years old. So getting to go to things that I've always wanted to to go to, I mean, why why not keep pushing yourself? And I don't know, I like to be challenged. I love to be busy. I don't like having extra time on my hands. I get more stressed out if I'm not doing something than if I have like a trillion different tasks I have to complete. And yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. I love it. <laughs> you know, we actually listened to that same type of thing that you just said coming here. Uh, Grant Cardone, he actually said, he was like, if you got open space in your schedule, the devil will go in there, you know, because he'll just take up your time. Because if you have empty space, you're going to just, you. it's going to be like difficult. Like, what are you going to do with that empty time? Mm-hmm. You know, bad thoughts start running through your head, you know? So like you said, it's good to be busy. But you know what? Honestly. We're, right now we're building into the structure where we are, but I want to I want to kind of bring it back to Jack Hurley when he's like when he's even before middle school, young Jack Hurley running around these same streets. I want to know exactly what it was like. Hey, don't lie. I'll get your mom up here right now, and she'll tell us exactly how you were as a kid. So don't don't show. As a kid, um, oh, baseball wise, no, like, no, 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 just just how you were. Uh, younger, like whenever I was like 10 and 12, yep. like I was definitely like that little troublemaker that would like talk out in class and do stupid stuff. But like, <laughs> I feel like that that's like, I don't know, like as immature, like as a kid, I feel like we all, like everybody has like a little bit of immaturity, yep. but I was like really immature and like my friends would just influence me and in like class and always like messing around and stuff. But that's school though. So like. I didn't really like school that much, so I mean, I mean that's a good way to put it. Like I didn't like it, so I didn't really focus too much. But I made the change in college, and I focused a lot more. Um, but younger, younger, I was definitely a little jerk, definitely. 
Sounds exactly like this guy over here. Yeah, he's, he, all throughout school. He's like, got to be worse right. than me. He might have been worse. I he's still that way. He's bad. <laughs> he's so, really bad. I've never been a big fan of school, as we know. I uh, continue to hate school. I think school is, is pointless. And, the hating um, school podcast right here. I, I, look, I don't like school, especially like middle school. How are you supposed to keep a kid like me yeah. bottled up into a classroom for eight test. hours? It just can't happen. It yeah. just can't happen. Recess, I'm out there. I'm just I'm dropping heads yeah. in recess because I'm I'm built up. You know, like yeah. I was always like a very, you know, wild guy. I still am. But like, you know, I don't know how you could just keep kids like built up in a, in a library or something. You're trying yeah. to tell them to read a book. First of all, you don't even know if they could read or not. Someone mm-hmm. like me, it was tough for me to read. And I would just sit there and I'm like, I'm not doing it. And the punishment for guys like us that wanted to go to recess yeah. was taking recess away. So yeah. you get in trouble and your recess would just come out of your hands. And and that's what motivated me whenever I was 12 to just not talk back to the teacher or not be that little jerk. And I would stay focused in school so I could have my recess time. That's, no lunch detentions over no here. No lunch detentions. You know what? I'll tell you one thing. They took my recess away, but I made recess my seventh period class. I used to run around that classroom all day. I didn't really care what the teacher said. Don't take my recess, recess away. Katie, I feel like you're a good student like him. So. Uh, yeah, I've always. I was just a very quiet student. Let me do my work and stuff. And let me, you know, hand in stuff. Probably a great grades. So. I, I, I was very outgoing, but I definitely was a rule follower. I still do follow the rules. <laughs> I just I didn't like getting in trouble. Yeah, same way. Same <laughs> one. Yeah, we're not saying to get in trouble, right? No. But we're just saying I wouldn't do things. Have a little fun in trouble. elementary school. Oh, yeah. I had tons of yeah. fun. Oh yeah, it's easy to have fun in those schools, yeah. and she probably did have a lot of fun in that in like elementary school. But looking back on it, how much fun those times were, like just like recess and like hanging out with the fellas, like man. Oh man, go back to those times. So, I mean, <laughs> look. Even in high school, right? I was just like this in high school. I I was crazy in high school too. Like teachers used to yell at me all the time. They used to tell me things like, "Oh, you're not gonna have a future," and this and that. And I'm like, "Good, good. That's fine. I'm not learning your biology right now. I don't really care, okay?" But that's what they would say, and I don't know why teachers said it. I don't know if they said it to you, like, "Hey, like, you're not gonna have a future if you don't pay attention to my algebra." Yeah, give me a break. I mean that that. There was conversations like that, but I feel like in high school, I turned a little bit of, like, in a little bit of maturity, like, a little bit, so I didn't get, like, in a big trouble, but th- and it, you you don't, like, talk back in high school, or you don't, like, not pay attention as much in high school. Like, that was elementary school and middle school phase. Yeah. Whenever I was, like, 16, like, I was, I was a little bit better, like, focused. I would talk in class. I get in trouble for talking to my friends. Did you get upset when you get in trouble? No, not in high school. But I was also like best friends with a lot of my teachers. <laughs> Teacher pet. <laughs> Were you? Uh, <laughs> no, some teachers didn't really like me. Some really liked me. It, I I picked and choose which teachers I wanted to be friends. Mm. Sparrow was not a teacher pet. Chris was not a teacher's pet at all. <laughs> no, I, I used to get in trouble with the teachers um, nearly every day. Um, every day I would get in trouble, yeah. I would get, you know, demerit or something like that and you know, I, I think I called it upon myself, but at the same time, they're they're spewing garbage at the time. So I just don't really I how am I gonna listen if they're spewing garbage? Like if someone's telling me something that like I'm actually gonna take, right? Yeah. Like my, my baseball coach in high school, right? He had some knowledge. But my biology teacher on the other hand, what knowledge do they have in baseball? What are they trying to tell me? They're trying to tell me, oh, you won't make it in college if you continue to act like this in, in school. It's like, how would you know? How would you know? You know? It was always like, it was always like, whenever you miss a homework assignment in like sixth grade, they'll be like, this won't happen in seventh grade. Like, <laughs> yep. This can't happen in seventh grade. Yep. And then you get to seventh grade, you'd miss an assignment. And they'd say, this can't happen in eighth grade. And then you get to eighth grade, and this can't happen in high school. But I'd still miss assignments in college. <laughs> and it still happened. Like, it, it, like, it's not like anything bad. I got good grades. Like, it's not like anything bad happened. You can miss assignments. Yeah. And your teachers are going to say that it can't happen, but it can. Tell your teachers. It's not the main takeaway of this. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. if, you can miss assignments. If a teacher says that you can't miss assignments, tell them stop the cap. Because okay? <laughs> they're lying to your face. They yeah. Are you, are you kidding me? You can, you can miss whatever you want. Guess what? They got another seventh grade class again, so the same thing. Yeah. But, you know, besides that, you know, Joe is a, 
they like school. And I mean, yeah, you guys definitely turned it around, though. Like, in baseball, if you just took it from the baseball point of view, you weren't missing the assignments there. Like, no. you can't miss a practice, can't miss no. a workout. Like, no, absolutely You're cut, so. Yeah, no. It all, it's all about perspective. Yeah, I mean, in school, yeah, but when we're talking about baseball, like, if you miss something, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Like, you'll actually, like, feel sick going at home. Going home, you're like, you missed a practice or something like that. Like, you can't. Imagine like, missing, like, a practice. Yeah. But you can't miss a practice. Like, you just, just can't, can't miss a practice. But, yeah, so I wanted to get a little background of, like, what it was like when you were younger. Katie, what about you? You have any um, siblings? Yeah, I have two older brothers, so I'm the youngest. We're all really close in age, though. I'm a year and a half younger than my brother Michael and two and a half years younger than my brother Peter. So yeah, we're all very close. Um, they grew up playing sports. So I've always been around sports. I danced my whole life and then I did track and field. I also played basketball at one point, soccer. So yeah, I loved the the sports side of things. And then I'd go to all my brother's games. I loved cheering them on. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't play baseball though. That's the one sport they didn't play. She learned quick, though. She actually knows. Yeah, I didn't know baseball. really anything about baseball. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to give her a little test. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. And this is a baseball class. Give her a little <laughs> test, you know. Um, well, I, I obviously grew up with uh, two older brothers, too. And um, obviously, they had a great influence in, in what I do today. And, and uh, they actually were my biggest motivator. So uh, I don't know if you were the same way. Obviously, you're a girl, and it's a little different. But, um, but yeah, they were my two biggest motivators. They always pushed me to be better and they never told me things I wanted to hear. And that's still to this day. Still to this day, probably. He, he doesn't tell me anything I want to hear, and that's how I want it. I want them to be my big, <laughs> biggest critics, but yeah, my biggest supporters. And uh, I don't know if that's the same way. Yeah. Yeah, they've all, I mean, my brothers are so hardworking, so smart, and I can really come to them with anything. And they'll give me their best advice, and they'll say things straight up, and that's how you need to hear them sometimes. That's right. Jack, what about you? I mean, me and, my, me and my siblings are really close, too. Uh, well, like, Luke or Maggie didn't really play, like, baseball uh, or softball. Yeah. So it was a little bit different. But Luke was a pretty good swimmer, and Maggie was good at basketball, too. So, I mean, watching them play, like, varsity sports, it's cool. Um, like, you want to – I don't know about you guys. Like, our high school, was, football was huge, and basketball was pretty big. Um, but watching, like, my sister play basketball – at a high level, and Luke kick butt and swimming is cool. You want to work towards that. <clears throat> to you're in your senior year or junior year when you first get your college offer. Um, <clears throat> first college offer was like sophomore year. Okay. Uh, I like went to a couple camps, got some exposure. I was looking to go to a couple of different schools. It was like Virginia Tech. Yeah. Never got offered from Duke, but I was talking to them a lot. I was really interested. And then West Virginia. Um, and those were like the main three. That was all kind of around my sophomore year of high school. And I decided, I think, that year too. And Virginia Tech was just, I mean, there's something about it. I liked it a lot. Yeah, I mean, Duke. Uh... <laughs> I got in. Oh, they said I would be able to get in. I know it's like a really good school. But they said my freshman year of high school, they said, send your transcript. And I like sent it over and I had like a 4.2 GPA. Oh. They were like, you know, this kid, like, he's smart. He can get in. They said, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And then, you know, as we went on with high school, the grades, they didn't get significantly worse, but they kind of stepped down each each level. Did not perform well on the SAT. Did not. So I don't think Duke would have been <laughs> tough test. <thrilled. laughs> tough but test for anybody. Virginia Tech was open arms, and you know, they they let me in with that with that decent score on the SAT. All right, Katie, give us something good about the SAT. <laughs> I didn't have to submit an SAT score. I was the year. I was the year we didn't have to because schools oh, yeah. made a test optional. So I took the like the practice SAT, and then I took like another. I took the SAT, but it was like as another practice for me. I just wanted to get like the experience, and then there were no SATs for like the next six months, and then I didn't have. To, I mean, I was submitting my college application, so I didn't have to do it. But I mean. My brother, he helped me study because he got a 1570. He's a genius. So that's what I was competing with. He's literally my genius brother. That's insane. <laughs> but I don't think I would have gotten that. I think maybe, like, my goal was a 1300. Wow. 
but I yeah, didn't. I don't know. Um, yeah, so going back to uh, baseball now. Yeah, back to baseball. You know. Jack, uh, we've had a lot of guys on the podcast talking about their experience going to Miami as a uh, freshman. Going in, we usually have to go, like, summer ball. Like, we have to go there, like, two months early. Is the same thing at Virginia Tech, or is it a little different? So we were supposed to go to summer ball that summer. It was the COVID summer, though, so the whole league got shut down. Um, supposed to go up to, like, the Cal Ripken League and play in Maryland. Actually, in um, Bethesda. Yeah. So she lives like 20 minutes away or 30 minutes away. But uh, yeah, supposed to go there and play. Didn't end up happening. Went to like the COVID college freshman year. It was a little bit interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they just made us grind right away. There's, you, I mean, you went to like to Virginia Tech, like you know how it was. It's yeah. just, it's a grind, but <clears throat> I mean, it's all for a reason. And I trusted them. They took over for me. Nice, yeah. I remember going in, like, my first workout as a freshman walking in, I was, like, a lot smaller than a lot of the guys, not thinking I was. I thought I was a big guy going in. And everyone was, like, huge. Yeah. Uh, it was the same at Virginia Tech when you went in as a freshman? Or Yeah, there was a lot of big dudes. And you have, like, that, like, freshman, like, you don't really know what to expect. <laughs> and, like, that freshman mentality, like, you don't know. Like, I no thought idea. I was probably way better than I actually was going in there. And then you go in, you're like, oh, like, you actually really have to work hard, earn this job. Um, nothing was given, so it was. That's probably really good for me to go that, go in there and see that there's a lot of guys that were a lot better than me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a shell shock when you first land on your mm-hmm. college campus. Like, Can imagine Miami too. That's probably like oh, another God. step. You gotta tell, gotta tell them about the Terrell. Yeah, when I first moved <laughs> in, uh, my two roommates, like my two best friends right now, is uh, Terrell Fetterman, mm-hmm. and I think you. Played both of them. Yeah. yeah and then friend. Chris McMahon was my actual, like, roommate. But we were sweet mates. And Chris and I, Chris is a Pennsylvania kid. Mm-hmm. And I'm um, Northeast, obviously, so they roomed us together. We walked into the room. Terrell and Fed are, like, setting up, like, getting their room together. Their parents are there. We're all talking. And then we're walking to the field. My mom goes up to Terrell and goes, excuse me, are you a senior? <laughs> and she was, she was like, no, I'm a freshman. She said the same thing to Fed. She thought they were both seniors after looking at, like, me and McMahon. Because, like. Chris wasn't that big of a guy either. Yeah. Coming in. Those guys are also mammoths. Like, yeah, full, full beer, yeah. 230, 6'3", like 18. Yeah. yeah not, not me. Yeah, not me either. I didn't shave until like sophomore year, so it took a long time. <laughs> I mean, you guys had different experiences. You guys went to the ACC right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, I went to uh, junior college, Lewisburg, right off the right off rip. And um, obviously, that in itself, I was expecting. I was supposed to do what he was doing, and I was going to go to Miami, and I was planning on doing that, and then COVID hit, mm-hmm. and everything got messed up with that, and so I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to JUCO, and then when I went to JUCO, man, first day on campus, I was like, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> this place, I mean, I can't even like describe it. It's Honestly, it's probably the best thing for me. I think that going to Lewisburg was actually like, the best thing for mm-hmm. me obviously like when you go there it's not like going to an acc school where they have all the stuff right you have all the the hitting facilities the lifting facilities you have the um you know the guys that are in there that you're like wow like that guy's like legit mm-hmm. these kids are basically all the same age it's a two-year school so we get there and i remember just sitting in the cafeteria one day and i don't even know what we had we had like these rubber looking eggs rubber looking eggs and just oh, like grits yeah. and i'm just like Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. And I think it was just because obviously the Juco route is huge. Mm-hmm. You know, people, I, we didn't have any idea what Juco was until I went there. And um, man, it was, Juco is different when you first get there. It is great. It is great. So it was a little different than mm-hmm. I want you guys experienced. But um, so with that, I mean, yeah. I mean, Katie, do you have, like, a similar experience, like, being an influencer? Like, do people come up to you all the time on campus, like, um, like a lot of exposure and stuff? Definitely. Yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I didn't expect it coming to Penn State. I'm from Maryland, and I'm pretty well known here now, but, I mean, if I were to go to Los Angeles or New York, people don't know me the same way they do here, so it's definitely a bit of a shock, because although people knew me in my hometown and at my high school, they also knew me all growing up. So now I'm coming to a school, a huge school. There's like 50,000 undergrads and people are stopping me, taking pictures of me. Um, Yeah, it's definitely a big change. And 
it's still something I feel like I'm not used to because I don't see myself the same way I think other people do. But I mean, it comes with what I do, so I can't complain. And I feel like people are very respectful now. Freshman year, not so much, but now people are respectful <laughs> and they just kind of let me be. They're like, oh, there she is. I'll hear whispers like, oh, that's Katie Beanie. <laughs> but that's it. That's all it really a Celebrity. Is. Celebrity. No, but I mean, it's not like that anywhere else. It's just here because it's like, it's a small, not, it's a big school, but it's a, there's something else really around. We're not State College, just kind of middle of nowhere vibe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it here though. That's why I chose. This guy's Penn. hometown right here. Part of the reason I chose Penn State. I love that it's not near a huge city. I think that's so cool. I live really close to DC and Baltimore, so it is. It is kind of in the middle of nowhere too. But man, dude, you middle of nowhere. Honestly, I like it though. It reminds me of my first summer ball experience, Woodstock, Virginia. Okay, you can. <laughs> I was Come in on, too. it's the, the same no, thing because there's a university that fifty thousand people go to. So take the population and add fifty thousand. There's not fifty thousand people in Woodstock, is there? No, there's probably like <laughs> 10. Yeah, so there's, there's like probably on average of eight months a year, there's probably 100,000 people that live in State College. So I mean, it's not like a small. Oh, State College is cool. I mean, once you started showing me around, I realized yeah. there was a lot more to it. Freshman year, yeah. I really had only seen no, I've seen on campus. My, and On my TikTok, sometimes it'll be like, a, someone will be like, I can't believe people actually live in State College. It was like a trend. Like there, yeah, people didn't you, know that people lived here. Because, I didn't really know how many people lived here because, yeah. I mean, there's like houses behind, like right where campus is too, and it's crazy. Like you'll sometimes I'll see like little kids riding bikes and families. That stuff happens here. Yeah, I know, and I'm like, wait, it's not just college kids. <laughs> That's I'm not even kidding. I'll be on my for you page. No, like, it's like a, wait, a, a lot of people. Like, in it's like I'm a ghost. It's like I'm not actually a thing. No, but you I'm, matter, Jack. <laughs> Just, matter. Everyday people, they don't matter. They're yeah, like, oh, it's like no. just like they just You're like, in a place like this, like okay. Literally, I love it here. On breaks, like I like staying here as long as I can. It is, it is nice. It's quiet during breaks. I was here oh, like man. almost all summer. That's. I love it. It's so fun. I mean, oh man, who actually lives here? Yeah, yeah, who no. lives in State College? Well, Jack Jack Hurley does. Look it up on on Twitter. It's or Beast. On Beast does. <laughs> Beast. Oh man. So wow. Oh my god! So, Katie, when you go to the football games, you go on right on the field. Obviously, we see your videos. You go right on the field. It's like, what is it like when you guys are playing Michigan or something, and it's a whiteout? Like, what is like the experience? Like, do you feel like you're actually in the game? Yeah, it is the craziest experience. My first whiteout, we played Auburn. I cried after that game. It was also my first time on the field, and I've never been on the field prior to that for a football game. And I mean, you just it's so loud there is people screaming and the fans are so spirited and so much fun here and then you're right next to these huge football players and I get to see them run out and I mean I I haven't seen an atmosphere that compares to Penn State and I feel like now I've been to a lot of different games I feel like the closest would be the Army Navy game which was a different experience but also one of the coolest games I've ever been to yeah, it's it's awesome. I love it. I don't even like I don't feel like I'm missing out on the tailgating stuff. Yeah, so you said uh, there's no experience like that, just like what the amount of people, like the environment. Yeah, like... I mean, Penn State games have at least 105,000 every single game. Even when you think it's not going to be a great game, there's still the stadium's still nearly full. And then yeah, games like the White Owl, Michigan, Ohio State, there is at least 110,000. And that's more than for like, yeah, really any NFL game. I don't think there's any soccer NFL game, team. baseball game. Jack, I want to hear a rebuttal. You got to stick up for your school. For, for what? Virginia Tech? Yeah. No, there's like 70,000 people that go to those games. What about entertainment? Game. No. That was entertainment, really cool. Entertainment's cool. It's, it's a like cool tradition. It's got that like, it's like it's silent and everybody sings the same song. It's very cool, but. Nothing compares to Penn State. Doesn't football. compare to Nothing. That. Like you, you can, I don't know, like people like that went in the SEC schools, like it's obviously rowdy there too. Yeah. But the whiteout, it's special. Like I've gone to like a ton of them. They're different. I know like Tennessee has like their stripe out or then all these other schools have their thing, but I mean Penn State Whiteout's on top. Yeah. I'm gonna give a um 
I don't know who said it, out of your house. If you like it so much, why don't you go there? No, <laughs> well, there's a reason I didn't go to Penn State, and I didn't want. I I wanted to get away. I wanted to okay. get away from from State College a little bit because it's in the middle of nowhere. Like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> no, <laughs> Virginia Tech's in the middle of nowhere. That's it. That's it. Blacksburg is so fun. Oh, I love okay. Blacksburg. Okay. Okay. It's so cool. I it, love that town. I feel like it's very similar to State College, just a little bit smaller. It is. It is. It's very similar, but. No, I, I just wanted to get away. That's why. I, I love Penn State, but I wanted to get away. I don't think Blacksburg was fun, honestly. In my <laughs> opinion. There, was no, there was nothing there. Nothing there at all. It wasn't for me. You know, the mountains and stuff like that. It was cold. It was cold. It was, um, you know, I could see it, it being fun for, for you. and you Yeah, know, Jack, I, mean, I would just know, miss it. It would be fun, but <laughs> for me, no, not at all. I, I like this. Joe's been to Blacksburg once. Yeah, I think Blacksburg. When you're busy. I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm just... Good in the chair. Where were we? Oh, about Blacksburg not being fun? Yeah. yeah that's where I was. I, I, I like Blacksburg. I liked it. I like the baseball. I like the guys. The guys, you have oh, to, the guys, the guys were guys. like, that was the best. The guys were elite. They were right. absolutely elite. I have to say, I love the dudes at, at uh, Virginia Tech. It was, um, honestly, I'm a little biased. You know, I, I came from North Carolina and I'm from New Jersey. It's a little, it's a little different. And I was only there for a year, so it's like a little bit. I didn't get like I guess a full experience yeah. that normal people get, right? You know, I mean, because everyone I talked to before going there, they're like, "Man, Blacksburg's sick!" Like I love Virginia Tech. I never heard anything bad about Virginia Tech. And you know, it was just like a different vibe. Obviously, my oldest older brothers they both went to Miami, and when I went to go visit them, I'm like, "Yo, this is different," you know. Mm-hmm. And then you go to Blacksburg, and you're like, "All right." Okay. It takes a little bit to like get you. used to and like, but I don't know. I, I liked it. And the guys, like we said, made it the Oh the guys make made it. it worth it. I mean the baseball too. Yeah, the baseball was great too. I mean there's it's obviously in the one of the best conferences for baseball, so yeah. Can't deny that. Yeah, so uh, freshman year you get there and uh I don't know, speaking for like me with Miami we had a really hard fall. Fall like kinda like determined everything and as a freshman mm-hmm. year Every at bat, you're like nervous, like mm-hmm. or I was nervous. I was like, I'm gonna get out here. I don't know, like playing time and stuff. How'd your uh, freshman fall go? Freshman fall was like pretty good for me. I played I like a lot of center field. I uh, got a lot of reps in, but we also didn't have that year before because it was COVID, like that high school year. So I was like, my timing was off, everything was off hitting, um, and it took a little bit to get all that back. And even whenever I did get it back, like I wasn't that good my freshman year. I didn't have like a very good year in my opinion um so i mean yeah it was a hard fall it went well enough to get a lot of playing time and stuff but that's still it was still wasn't up to that like expectation that i wanted it to be and then you ended up earning a starting spot in spring <clears throat> yeah i was I, I played like 44 games or something my freshman year not every game uh in and out a lot of the lineup but it was great for like a freshman like not everybody gets to go and play right away so obviously like the coaches gave me a great opportunity and it was I was super, super thankful for that. Mm. Cool. I mean, that's interesting. Katie, I was I I was actually, I was thinking about asking this because I was just like, you're from Maryland. What made you pick Penn State over Maryland? Because that's a big school too. And yeah. I, I mean, it's completely off mm-hmm. topic, but like I was just thinking yeah, about it. Off. Completely off topic. Too, but it, 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 but like, a good it, question. it was my, I was going to ask her, but I don't want to get too far away from that conversation. So I was going to ask, hey, what made you, you're wearing Maryland colors. I mean, this is crazy. <laughs> this is insane. We're in Maryland colors out here. Yeah, I mean, I got into University of Maryland. It's a great school. I got into their honors program. So, I mean, yeah, I got into their business school. So they're, I was planning on going there, like 99% sure I would go there. And then, I mean, deep down, I didn't really want to. My entire high school goes to Maryland. Um, both my brothers were at Maryland. My, like, it's just like everyone in my area, if you got into Maryland, you're most likely going to go because it is a great school. But I mean, it was also around the time where I was doing the social media stuff. And in high school, I'd get picked on and people knew me. And I just, I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to go somewhere different, somewhere further away, but still kind of close to home. And Penn State's only three hours away. It's a huge football school. I loved that about it. I mean, I, my neighbor went to Penn State and she loved it, so I've only heard great things, and then I visited here, and yeah, I fell in love with the school, and I also, I mean, I didn't really apply many other places, because I was pretty sure I'd go to Maryland. Huh. 
but yeah, Ohio State I did apply to, but didn't really, didn't really want to go to Ohio State. Can't, can't be saying that name around this time. I know, Clemson. Ohio State. Oh, I applied to Harvard. That was another one where I was like, if I get into Harvard, I'm going. I had my interview with them, thought it went great. No. Yeah. It's she, well, she, she actually told me, she was like, you should have, like think about applying to some different IVs. Like, I don't know if Harvard's the right fit. And I mean, at that point, it was too late to apply anywhere else. So I was like, because they didn't have the program I wanted or something. I don't know. I'm happy I didn't go to Harvard. I don't think it would have been the right place for me. And if I had gone to, a school like Maryland or Harvard, I don't think any of the sports stuff would have happened. So I think everything happens for a reason. Firm believer in that. Wow. So you mentioned you got, you were getting picked on? Oh yeah. I got all sorts of, I mean, like, That's crazy. I was an easy target. I was the social media girl. I mean, I also like, I mean, I had great friends and I mean, I don't think people were saying stuff and actually some people were probably trying to <laughs> hurt my feelings, but, and it worked. But yeah, I mean, it made me, it made me develop a thick skin, and you get the last laugh though. Yeah, I mean that. <laughs> laugh now, man. Yeah, what now? What? 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 So that is a motivation of mine too, is to prove people wrong. I think like everyone that said I couldn't achieve what I wanted to achieve, or they they told me I'd go nowhere with this, and why am I spending so much time? And that th- those are things like even like people that were pretty close to me would say and now i mean i feel like they can't say that so <laughs> yeah that's reasonable to say i mean you, look oh, at, you there's me. facts there's Little yeah. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> she, she can back it up what now that i mean i just got chills <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's fine people still know. say stuff though but i mean i just try to ignore it because like at the end of the day if this makes me happy then i'm going to continue to do it and i mean you have to block out everyone all the outside voices I think it's probably the same in baseball and really in a lot of different things there's always going to be people trying to bring you down and it's hard to find I mean I think it's just like human nature is a lot of people don't want to see you succeed and that's the sad reality that I've come to realize so keep your circle tight and you will find people that do support you and when you find those people keep them close I mean, that's what I brought these for. These are the hater blockers right here. <laughs> you throw the bad boys on, you're blocking out the haters. <laughs> and you're just like, what's up, you know? <laughs> so these are, uh, I mean, that was great, obviously. Like, you like these? Throw these on. Yeah, she should throw them on. She should. Throw on the hater blockers. Blocking yeah. out the haters. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, <damn>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's honestly, that's honestly like, I mean, it's great to hear. Obviously, baseball, you got a lot of critics as well, right? So you're getting critics. I mean, Jack, I don't know about you. Did you have critics when you were coming I, up to I it? definitely had critics. I mean, I hit my junior year of high school baseball. I hit 222. And it was just devastating. I was committed to Virginia Tech. Everyone's like, this kid's supposed to be a D1 prospect. He's supposed to like be good. And he hit 222 in the mid pen. Like, that's terrible. But, you know, that, that, that didn't play my senior year. So I, I literally went in to Virginia Tech hitting 222 my junior year in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. So, I mean, that, yeah, you, you got critics from that. People were like, why is this kid committed here? Why, like, I'm better than this kid, whatever. I don't, I don't care. It was a bunch of bogus. Uh, critics are a, a big thing. Oh, I mean, we still get them today. Chris had one this morning. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I've been getting them basically my whole life just because of the things I do. And in high school, I would get them all the time. Actually, growing up, middle school, me and Joe both were picked on heavily. Yes. We used to get picked on every single day. On Honestly, it would be like either physical. I, I think I told the team mm-hmm. that I was like in, in middle school that, you know, physically I would get bullied or whatever. Joe, psychologically, I guess. But um, honestly, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Look, bullying is horrible. It is. It's terrible. To get bullied is something that you, you know, take with your whole life. And getting picked on, you take with your whole life. Man, I wouldn't have it any other way. I actually liked it. I'm glad it happened. It's crazy to say now, because mm-hmm. back then I was like, why is this happening? But now I look at it, and everything I do, that's on my mind. All the critics, all the people that picked on me. Guess what? 
I'm still going to do it. I don't care what you say. So it, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe, same thing with you, you know? Yep. I mean, there's a lot of people that have told me, hey, you can't, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. You won't make it there. What else are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And you were told to get a real job this morning. You were told to give it up. I, uh, <laughs> I see, actually, no, no name. No, 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 no name. I, I saw a guy and, uh, I see him and, you know, grew up. He's known me for a while, right? And he's, um, he actually came up to me. I was like, hey, how you doing? Like, hope all's well. How's everyone? He's just like, what's up, buddy? Like, like how, how are things? You still doing that, like, baseball thing? And I was like, he's like, yeah. And he's just like, well, uh, now maybe it's time you get an actual real job, you know? Stop playing uh, baseball, man. You got to get a real job. I think it's time for you. And I get that all the time. People always come up to me and they're saying, like, hey, man, like, do you still play? Like, do you even play baseball anymore? Or, like, what do you do? Like, what are you going to do after? What are you doing after your last year? We shall see. <laughs> Put on those blockers. Because I ain't going to stop. You know? So it's like, it's those things. It's like people will just say things. Are they gonna, Are they meaning to hurt your feelings? Maybe not. But do they say things? Maybe. Just say, hey, just because we couldn't do it, we think that you can't do it either. And we're going to let you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, there are going to be people out there all the time. I mean, I bet you get it all the time too. Still. Pro I'm definitely... I'm I haven't gotten many like face encounters where yeah. they say like that. Um, but I mean, everybody has their own opinions and yeah. I mean, you know how everybody, like people just have their own opinions and some, some people are really supportive and some people aren't, but everybody's kept to themselves for me. At least I've, everybody's been nice to me and been very supportive. So I don't have many encounters where it's been like the opposite. Well, Katie, you could probably tell them the higher you get, the more hate you're going to get, right? I mean, there's going to be people out there that are going to be really trying to come at you when you get Get higher, but uh, you know, you gotta block them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So now that you're after your freshman year attack, okay, you're going into your sophomore year. First of all, like, how did your freshman year even go? I hit like two fifty, six homers, like struck out like a, literally like a third of the at bats I had. Just terrible. Just maybe even more than a third. It was like forty percent. It was awful. Big but they, that's a big clip. That's a big strikeout clip for you guys wondering out there. Like thirty five percent or something like that. It's a little bit too high. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty bad. Mm. So freshman year was, uh, you know. Um, Katie, what about your freshman year? Obviously, you mentioned it when you first got there. It was a little different, but like overall, how did it go? I mean, you were still doing, you know, TikTok and you're doing Instagram, but now at this point, you're starting to get a lot more traction, right? It was definitely a learning period. I had to learn how to balance a college workload, friends, like making new friends. That was tough. And then also being away from home. So not having my family with me when I come back from school. So it was just a lot of learning and it was tough. And I had some bad experiences freshman year. I also had some great experiences, met a lot of great people. I met my roommates now and they're like my best friends. So yeah, I think it was just a time for me to figure out what what to do in this new like life. I guess I'm creating for myself, and I feel like I'm I'm happy for all the the hard times because I mean, yeah, you grow from them, and I feel like I'm finally at a spot where not only like probably one of the best mental states I've ever been in, but just like yeah, I'm happy, and I'm I feel a lot less stressed is good because i get stressed out very easily let's get a spot check yeah what's a spot check jack explain um, what a spot check is a spot check is a ranking one through ten where you rate <laughs> your current spot one being the worst ten being the absolute best so a 10 is in my opinion is pretty rare like there's only a couple of tens i think i said 10 the first time they asked me and it's, it's like because, the barstool scale but spot scale yeah, yeah i yeah, didn't yeah, really realize scale. like how much value a 10 holds and I'm visiting Jack and I was I was having I was really happy a 10 a 10 and is so crazy I, I said a 10 and all of his roommates they were looking at me like you're you're a 10 <laughs> are you sure about that a 10 is like you just scratched out a scratch off ticket and it's like two billion dollars like that is a 10 I, actually that well, might be seeing, a 12 seeing you yeah. is the most two billion dollars hey. <laughs> all right all right um I'd say I'm like a seven a seven yeah that's respectable seven right now yeah, I mean, it's like that that seasonal, 
not, I mean, like, I'm happy, but I feel like when the weather starts getting cold, it gets a little bit. Mm -hmm. Christmas time. Yeah. But now it's, oh yeah, the holiday season. When Christmas hits, it's going to be a 9.5. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I get it. I get it. Could that be a 10? Could Christmas morning count as a 10? Christmas morning, whenever I was like 11, mm, was like, that's an whenever I, yeah. no, I actually don't want to expose Santa, but whenever I was like 9, Christmas morning was a 10. <laughs> Santa's be breaking into people's houses. It's kind of messed up. <laughs> yeah. Caught him one day though. One day I did catch him. Yeah. Coming, coming down from the chimney. I was like, hey. <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> what is happening? What's your spot check? Both of you. Uh, I'd probably say around a six right now. Mm -hmm. My spot, I would have to say probably around a seven, seven and a half. Honestly, I've been I've been in a good spot, you know, for a while. You know, the spot has definitely changed from uh, this time last year. Mm -hmm. um, I there's sometimes a tech. I was in a spot. Tough spot. Mm -hmm. Tough spot. You know, that household. That household will uh, put you in a tough spot when they used to go over your house. <laughs> was, it, was, it was so much fun. Though. There was, it, it, was, it was. It was a lot of fun. Um, the question is, though, to Jack and to Keith, this is kind of a baseball slash life thing. You wake up and you're going through your weeks where you're going to have, you're in a, a tough spot at like a one or a two. How do you continue through your day being at a one or a two? <clears throat> you want me to answer this one? Sure. I think for me, whenever I'm in a one or a two, um, and I don't complete like my certain tasks, like I feel super guilty, like internally, not like anything, like I don't actually feel guilty, but like I'm like, I should have done that. Like, why am I not doing that? Even if it's like something, your life is just down bad, you're down bad, you're not having a good time. Completing those things that you need to do, like getting in the gym, going to hit, like, your daily tasks that's the stuff that it's like consistently like we talked earlier i just feel super guilty if i didn't do it yeah i think creating good habits so even when you're not feeling motivated you still have certain things that will carry you through the day and then also like scheduling things to look forward to i know i always feel better when i know i have something coming up in a month or even a couple months and like i don't know like just planning fun activities with your friends or your family, whatever it may be, like surrounding yourself with people. And that's always been good. Also like speaking about how you're feeling, like telling other people I am in a bad spot. I feel like a lot more people can relate to what you're going through than you may think. And you may think like you're all alone, but you really aren't. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's great stuff right there. Obviously, yeah. So, that's real. I feel no, like. no, it's real. It's it really is real. I mean, you're not gonna be happy all the time. You're not gonna be, you know, in the best mood every day. You're not. But it is very, very important. Like you gotta say, schedule. You have your schedule. It doesn't matter how you're feeling in that day. You have to get these things mm -hmm. done, and that is going to break you out of whatever funk that you're in. Doing nothing, feeling sorry for yourself, mm -hmm. not. You know, talking to other people, I think talking to other people is very important. I remember <clears throat> an example, me, I was talking to Jack, I wasn't in a great spot, whatever, and we just talked it out, and next thing you know, we're going to have an uplifting mood. We know exactly what we're going to do. We're scheduling our days. We're motivating e each other, right? And honestly, the whole thing is just like a snowball, no matter where, where you're going. You, if you roll a snowball down a hill, it will get bigger, and you'll go down, and it will get bigger. But if you roll a snowball up the hill, which is harder to do, it will still get there. So that being said, keep moving forward. Keep rolling that ball up the hill. And I guarantee you will get out of whatever funk that you're in. Yeah, I agree. I think that another thing on that is if you're in a bad spot and you are <clears throat> you want to stay home and stay on the couch and do that, the spot's probably not going to change, right? Yeah. But you get outside and you do your thing. I mean – you're already a one or two. Like it's hard to go down <laughs> from one or two. So it's likely it's gonna go up and you're gonna start feeling better if you start, you know, knocking out that schedule and, and being consistent. If you go down to a below one or a two, There's, call somebody. Yeah. Definitely call someone. Talk it out. Um definitely want to promote that. You wanna talk to people, talk to people that care about you because there are people that care about you. I don't care what, what you think that but there are people that are gonna care about you. And they they're, they're going to listen to you. And um, the, the thing that people need to understand is if you're in a, a, a one or two spot, 
look, you talk to people, you talk it out, whatever, but they're not getting you out of that spot. The only person that get out of that spot is you. The only person that can get you out of the situation that you're in, your situation sucks, deal with it, okay? You're going to have to figure out a way to get out of that funk. That's the only way you're going to get out, okay? I don't care what people say. You have to be able to get yourself out of that funk. And it's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to fake to be happy. I'm going to fake have motivation. No, it's you sticking to your schedule, doing the things you know you need to do, and I guarantee you will get out of the funk and you'll feel better about yourself. With that, I want to ask about how you guys schedule, how in, how advanced is your scheduling, and <clears throat> what are the main things that you need to get done every single day and every single week? My schedule is basically around workouts, um, so hitting and, and lifting. I have like a lifting schedule every week. It's like I lift at 11 o'clock on Mondays, 9, Wednesdays. Like just daily you have your set time that you go and you lift. I lift with this trainer scott everhart best trainer in state college um and he he does a really good job so he keeps me consistent um and then lip and then hitting it's a little bit different like you i hit with some guys and and they like our, our schedules are different so we have to work out of time we always do that the night before or like the morning of we just say you know let's go two o'clock today whatever but that's my schedule it's not very high tech but it's uh yeah i do the same thing every day pretty much um, I feel like I just, I have certain things that I prioritize getting done. One of them is working out. Um, I try to work out every morning, whether it's at 8 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and it really gets me in a good mood for the rest of the day, and then get whatever schoolwork I have done, or whatever classes, whatever schoolwork I need to get done for that day, and then I try to post on every platform, and I mean, I also, I've learned to not put as much pressure on myself if I don't post as much as I would like to and like it's okay to have days off but just yeah I'll post like once or twice on TikTok five times on YouTube like probably like 50 times on my Snapchat stories and then like maybe one Instagram reel and then I'll try to I'll, I'll usually dedicate some days to filming some days to posting and then I've been traveling almost every weekend so that kind of throws my schedule off but I'm always very busy when I'm traveling so I like to get back in the group once I get back home. <laughs> Traveling? Where have you been going? Um, I've been to LA, New York, Atlanta. We went on a road trip <laughs> together. Mm -hmm. We drove through like how, like seven states, I think. Um, yeah, we went from Atlanta to State College, so that was like yeah, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, went, Virginia, yeah. West Virginia, Maryland. Went to the World Series in Texas. That was really cool. Um, yeah, the U.S. Open was in New York. Um, I went to the MLS Cup uh, recently. That was in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, I've been I've been going around. It's mm -hmm. fun. I love it. U.S. Open. That's a real celebrity place right there. Seeing like yeah, but Beyonce. <laughs> Go, <bro>. I actually <laughs> didn't see anyone. A lot of people. A lot of like the celebrities will go. The final days and i was there the first day so i was there like the opening the opening mm -hmm. matches and the day after but it was a really cool experience i've never seen tennis in person like that so it was fun you got a sore neck after just <laughs> <laughs> Going back it is funny it reminds me of we sports like seeing everyone's heads turn <gasps> <gasps> yeah i love watching tennis so you've been playing too mm -hmm. yeah we play sometimes we're both terrible but terrible. we try to play outside there yeah. sophomore year Want to hear about Jack's uh, oh, yeah. turn around baseball? Oh, yeah. So my sophomore year, <clears throat> I, like, started out hitting really well. Um, it's, like, hitting really well. Like, I was playing my best baseball, made some pretty big mechanical adjustments, and then that kind of just, like, set me up for success. I started off really good. It's easy to, like, start off really good and, like, continue that throughout the year. If you start out bad, kind of like how I did my next year, it's, it's a lot harder to get those numbers and, like, that feeling back. Um, but sophomore year, like, we went to a super regional. We were, like, the second best team in the country. It was pretty crazy, and to be a part of that was pretty special. Um, but it was just an awesome time. One of the highlights of my life playing baseball. Well, you know what I'm going to ask. You know exactly what I'm going to ask. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to ask. You know, I – obviously, I do this stuff every day. What mechanical cues did you do? 
Uh, yeah. what, what was the change? So let's do it. I've had a bat in my hands. My <laughs> we're getting the bat. We're getting we're the bat. Getting right? Yeah. So a good side angle here. There. Yeah. Hands were going like here. Just there. This is my freshman year. They were just coming back here. And then I had a coach that told me once that, you know, you want to point that barrel or the bottom of the barrel back to the catcher. So you get a little bit of like a barrel tilt coming instead of just kind of here. Here. Meh. No, I wanted to be here and then here. So it kind of just slotted a lot better because I was going back. And I was trying to make up for it, and I was getting super steep through the zone as opposed to kind of getting here and letting everything come through parallel. Um, it just made everything more consistent. It was just a simple switch from going instead of this to there, point back towards the catcher. Get that separation. Just that simple, just like that. <laughs> so, that was basically uh, <laughs> like one switch I made. There wasn't anything else. Well, I mean, honestly, it could be the, the smallest thing, right? With baseball, it's game of inches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you make a little adjustment like that, as just one single thing, one thing that you see, one thing that a coach tells you that you learn can literally change your career. <clears throat> yeah. And that's exactly what just happened. I mean, you changed literally something so simple. And made it into mm -hmm. a swing that got you into the position you want right now. And I think that's what people understand. Like, you don't have to change everything. You have to learn what you need to know or what you need to know from guys who do it. Mm -hmm. And you have to know exactly how they did it and what drills they did to get them consistently to do it. And obviously, it didn't. you didn't just be like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to hit nukes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do a series of drills. I'm going to learn what it takes to get in that position consistently. And you did it every single day. Yeah. And, right, I mean, when okay. you say, like, yeah. how many reps did it take? Ton. I'm still working on it. Like, I'm still working on getting it consistent and everything. That's, like, three years later. But another big part was just once you see a little bit of success with, you know, you know your, like, mechanical change, then you start believing in it a little bit more. And then, like, it just all, like, just, it's like the snowball, like, it just all takes off um, and you build with momentum and you get more confident, more confident. And that's kind of what happened throughout my college career. Just get, kept getting more confident with more reps um, and changes. So you would say when you were doing this, you kind of, you figured this stuff out on yourself. Like someone told you, Hey, you got to get this pointed. Mm -hmm. And then with that, you worked on it yourself, right? Yeah. I was working on it a lot with my dad yeah. uh, and then coach Elvin at Virginia tech. Both those guys were huge for me. They, uh, they were basically monitoring, looking at it, because you can't see your own swing unless you're in a mirror. And to have four sets of eyes, or two other sets of eyes on, on my swings at all times, watching video, I'd send it to my dad. Kurt would, Coach Elvin would watch uh, videos, um, or he would watch it in person. So it was, it was very easy to get good feedback. Yeah, it's a video. I mean, I'm a big believer in video learning. I mean, I think video learning is kind of what made me be able to become like, the player I was is learning from a video, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know, I used to go to like, you know, hitting coaches or whatever, but it wasn't nearly as important to me than seeing a video, right? Mm -hmm. Seeing a video that I could watch over and over and over again that I can learn from every single time I could be like, Hey, 
that's what video and that's what cj strad did uh i think i i think it was cj strad he had like a like he would watch youtube videos and like how to be a quarterback or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, now he's like one of the best QBs in the league. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know, know. fact check me on that one, but I'm pretty sure it was CJ Stroud. Watch you hear that years. a lot. There's a lot of pros. Albert Pujol said being your own coach is, is very important, and just watching video of yourself swinging and watching other people doing it, and knowing exactly what you need to do and what it needs to look like, and drills that tailor to that. I think that is what separates people, and that's how people really learn and invest into themselves. So, I mean, that's really cool to hear that, you know, that adjustment that you made. And then, you know, your sophomore year, I know you're not going to want to want to say what, what the stat line was, but uh, I believe it was, what, 14? Yeah. 14, 14. homers. Not like this guy had like 20 is in like half the at-bats that year. 14 homers. I think it was four something. Like, no, it was 375. 375. But Easy he, number to remember. 375. I shit you not, okay? I shit you not. I'm – committed to Virginia Tech at the time, right? And I'm looking at the stat line, and I'm there having my season, whatever. And I'm just like, all right, I mean, let me take a look at these guys at Tech. You know, right? I look at this one guy, top of the list, I see 456. 456 with 12. I'm like, wait, that doesn't make sense in 100 and something. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 456, it's got to be a typo. And I looked at, I had to look it up again. I was just like, coincidentally, or not. Right whenever I met Katie. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's another. Like that's another part. There was a period. So I met Katie my sophomore year in December, mm-hmm. and then after that, I just seemed to take another step in baseball. And I really, I, there, there, there may be a correlation. Well, I, I mean, know. how did you guys even meet? Like Penn State. Yeah, your mutual friends. Mutual friends, and just no, I like, only. I don't know people know. Like, how, how did that? I don't even know. He picked me up from my dorm. We went to McDonald's. <laughs> we got some ice cream sundaes. First date took her to McDonald's. Yeah, but like, how'd you contact? Her? Her her brought, that was... How'd you do contact? Well, like, how'd you like know? Did you ask for your number or something? Yeah. Straight to the DMs. Or... There was a DM in there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there was a DM in there. Wait, there's nothing wrong with the DMs. No, but it was also like, I mean. I don't know. We we talked like it wasn't like that. We knew the same. We knew similar people. Yeah, too, and, and so we were, was like, it was it was like we the DM happened and like it was very. I mean, it was it wasn't like I don't know. It was whatever. So then we started talking um, every day, and then yeah, that, that from there yeah. I took her to McDonald's and it went great. What'd you get? Big 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 here at McDonald's. Sunday. Here's the order. Yeah, Just a Sunday? Got, Only an ice cream Sunday. Two, two ice cream Sundays. Wow, you guys two ice cream are very modest. I would have got two McDoubles. No. <laughs> Never spot. McDoubles is Chris's favorite restaurant. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> there will be a McDonald's in the house one day. I will have a McDonald's station. Two McDoubles. 20-piece nugget. Two large fries. Large DC. We should have gotten DC. fries. Should have got fries. Diet Coke. Diet Coke. But I mean, McDonald's, first date, huh? That and then... And then yeah. we went to dinner, I think, like, the next yeah. day. Yeah, we went to dinner, like, very soon after. Where'd you go, Where'd you go to dinner? Old New York. Mm-hmm. It's this yeah. place in State College. Um, yeah. Very good food. But after that, we went to a – we were supposed to go to a Caps game um, pretty early on, too. And it, it was, like, the COVID. It got canceled or whatever. But those were our, like, first couple of days. It was supposed to be yeah. NHL. Yeah, we did go to D.C., though. Okay, let me we hear did, the, yeah. uh, the first – well, I mean, you knew him before, right? A little bit. No, this, tell him the story about the, the, the honk. Story. Let's hear the, about the honk. Oh. It was funny. <laughs> this was funny. This Here we funny. go. I, I mean, I was obviously pretty nervous. And so, like, I walk out of my dorm, and, like, I couldn't find Jack. And I and so he called me. This is and, good. Like, this is good. <laughs> you and, can. He's, and he's like, can you hear me? Like, And he was like, honk his horn. And I don't even know where he was. Like, he was nowhere near. But I could hear the honk. I mean, maybe I was just imagining it. So he was, like, honking his horn wherever he was. And then finally, like... I don't know. You just found me, yeah. I guess. It was a good icebreaker because, like, we couldn't find each other. It was very confusing on campus. And I called her and I was like, yo, can you hear this knock? <laughs> knock or honk. And then uh, I was like, was like oh, oh, and then I started walking towards yeah. you, I think. Like, so I was like, walking, like, who knows where. I would hit it, like, every, every, like, 30 seconds. I'd be like, bang, and she'd, like, fall the noise. Bang. And then eventually. Eventually it just, like, connected. And then it was, like, it wasn't even awkward. No. Like, who knows? If, if we wouldn't have, like, had that first interaction, it might have just been like, 
a little bit. I mean, that was like no, it wasn't awkward at all. You've always been very easy to talk to. Yeah. Huh. Guys out there, honk that horn. You know? yeah. get, <laughs> get like a nice little icebreaker. Yeah. Like do yeah. something like mess up Pre- the first date a little bit. Yeah, pretend like you can't find him, and then just be like, "Yo, can you hear this?" And then just hold on to your horn. Yeah. <laughs> Break the ice. Oh, uh, that's a good icebreaker. You know, I have a simple one. How you doing? Simple. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Tony Soprano. How you doing? <laughs> it's just, um, I mean, that's just kind of like where we're from. It's like, yeah. you say, how you doing? It's like, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> from Friends, right? Like Joey Tribbiani, he used yeah. to say it to him. How do you, how do you, how do you feel about uh, Chandler? Yeah. It, like, it makes me so sad to watch Friends now. It's tough. It's tough my favorite it. show ever. Yeah, that was a, like the most, like I was the most played in this house too. Friends is always on. It's a great, great show. Well, I love, we love Friends too. Yeah. We watched it a couple times actually. Mm-hmm. Um, man, man, the whole night is phenomenal. <laughs> See, you guys got to McDonald's. That was good. And then dinner. Mm-hmm. And then you went back for your season. Or no, this was dorm season? This was, no, no, this was, was winter break. Or I was sophomore still. Sophomore year, 2022. Yeah. I was, um, it was finals week. So I, a, instead of studying, I would hang out with Jack. I ended up being great on my finals, though, yeah. somehow. We help each other. Finished with A's that semester. No, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, I, like, Jack is a very persistent person, I feel like, and also, like, I mean, he's not afraid to, like, speak his mind, or, like, if he wanted to hang out with me, he wouldn't hold that back. I feel like some people, like, I don't know, they won't tell you, like, I don't know, straight up, but Jack mm. always has, so. Hey. Yeah, we'd hang out, have fun, and. Mm-hmm. That's and we perfect. started dating very soon after. <laughs> you just heard it. <laughs> Let her rip. You want to hang out? Just ask. <laughs> just ask. Just ask. Just ask. Just ask. It seems very simple, but like for some people, it's not. Well, I think most most guys are just like they're like, oh, I don't know if I should ask to hang out. Maybe she like doesn't want to. No, mm-hmm. you should ask. I mean, if, they, if she doesn't want to hang out, then what did you Jordan should I keep talking to her? What did Michael Jordan say? You miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Mm-hmm. That's a true, it's a true statement. It is. Get in those DMs. Yeah, and it's better you find out earlier than like later. Like, if a girl doesn't want to hang out with you, then she'll say no. <laughs> like, it's better. Advice. It's better you know that right away than like milking it out, and mm-hmm. then like maybe later on. I don't know. And if she does say no, ask again. Maybe she was nervous. Persistence. Ask three times. Mm-hmm. Three times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? But then it gets right, a little after, after two, it's like. It's like okay. Oh, wow. It's a little stalker okay, yeah, now. What, what breaks the point where you're like, all right, you're being a little bit of a stalker again? Probably after she, two, yeah. Right? Probably after. Uh, I'd say after three. What if you get like a no response? Then you stop. Time? Then just stop. Yeah. She doesn't want to answer you. You think that, like it's like a false statement or a true statement that, like, girls, if they, like, leave you on scene once, they're, like, trying to, like, play hard to get, or they just they aren't interested? Um, I would say a lot of girls play games, but I, but I feel like if she leaves you on, if she leaves you on scene, or, like, on red, sometimes that means she wants you to just, like, text her again, or Snapchat you, her again. So, yeah. Girls, I mean, I feel like everyone loves a little bit of a chase. So girls like yeah, it. who's Chase? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Chase, Come where's he at? <laughs> what do you mean? What are we talking about? Oh man, so what is it like dating an athlete? That's my question. Like, what what is it like dating like a uh, professional athlete? I don't know. I just think of him as Jack. <laughs> I could care less if he played sports or whatever. It's fun going to the game, so I love being a cheerleader. Although Jack does tell me not to cheer too loud, so I. <laughs> No, you, uh, you, you, no, I've never said that. <laughs> yes, you have. Yeah, Jack, Jack usually, you know, if he hits a home run, he just kind of walks back to the dogout, doesn't say anything. He just, yeah. he just puts his head down, doesn't say anything. Right, Jack? Yeah, this, right? Like, this, is, where, this is where the dog gets excited. Oh, you running into the crowd. Well, that's different. Johnny it's... Manziel. Money, money no, I get it, though. Like... Well, well, actually, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> It's more like if he's like at bat, like I'm not gonna yell for him when yeah. he's like getting if he's in the zone. Well, which I, I, I think, wouldn't anyways. Like I'm not. I would. I would only do it when you do something really like great and everyone's cheering. Yeah. I will cheer louder than everyone else. But otherwise, <laughs> yeah, that is like completely acceptable. And I love that. Yeah. The part where that, I don't think this has ever happened, but if it was like a midweek and there's like 300 people at the games and 
there's one person standing up at me cheering. That would be much, but she never did that. So I wouldn't always... do that anyways. You have a lot of feel. She has a lot of feel. Yeah, I've learned, I just learned that phrase not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Wow. Good. Read the room. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. geez, like. Uh, before you answer first, can you, Katie, can you just like lean in for a second this way so the camera readjusts you? No, 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 it'll just re- auto adjust. Okay. Just don't, no, not move it, just stop. Not, not, just Katie. <laughs> Is that good? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. The camera readjusting. It's perfect. That looks so good. And we're back. Um, well, I'm, <laughs> when you go to the Virginia Tech games, like when you used to come, the people would be like, oh, wow, like, holy crap, that's, that's Katie Fiend's boyfriend out there. <laughs> no. It was, oh, it was either like, oh, girls would come up to her and be like, no, they would never. Like, they'd be like, that's No, Katie I know. Feeney. I'm saying, like, you're not Jack. You're Katie Feeney's boyfriend. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> oh, that's no. exactly what happened. Like, like you're, Katie, you're Katie Feeney's boyfriend. So, like, not even Jack, so, like, 90% of the fans out there, that is exactly what happened. Well, <laughs> Travis Kelsey's dealing with that right now. Well, I'm yes. not Taylor Swift. Another I'm level. Like it's relative. It is relative. Yeah. Relative down to the college level, it's pretty much similar to, you know what I mean? But I mean, obviously Taylor Swift is uh, Taylor Swift is <laughs> an icon. Taylor Swift, I think everyone in like everyone knows, knows who she is. I love Taylor Swift. Um, but it is kind of relative. I mean, I, I we should have been that for Halloween. Oh, that'd be elite. <laughs> we were. I just need to put on like kill fifty pounds and like grow uh, like Michigan a Jesus. massive beard and we get taller. Then, then maybe I could have pulled that off. Yeah, I do. I love coming and watching Jack. I, I mean, even when I'm like. When I, when I would be at school, I'd put it on my computer, and I'd watch all of your games, and then I'd just take videos and send them to you. <laughs> What's the biggest tip to uh, dealing with? Distance? Or, well, your boyfriend to go into a baseball. Obviously, baseball is an up and down sport. Oh, like, be, like, like here, 0 for 4 game, tough spot, oh. Miami, whatever. <laughs> that didn't happen. Actually, not yet. I think That's just, it. like, didn't being happen. there for your partner, I guess. Um, I mean, there's really not much you can say, but just like being there, if being someone that they can talk to, but also like, I feel like Jack bounces back very quickly. Like if he has a bad game, like maybe he'll, he won't be in the best mood right after, but I mean, literally give him like an hour and then we'll go to dinner and he'll be completely fine. So like you have a really good mindset, which I admire because I can imagine, I mean, I don't play, I never played baseball at a D1 level, but even like dancing and doing sports in high school like when you don't perform how you would like to it sucks and it's sometimes it's hard to like shake it off but you do a great job so it's not too it's not too hard with you yeah. that's a shout out Taylor Swift yeah. shake it off. <laughs> but no, there's not much you can say though I mean, there's really nothing you like can say. if you go over four with four punches like <laughs> four punches <laughs> the only yeah, thing I want to hear like, tell them like don't try to like speak in like their terms either because like if I feel like if I tried to to help you by like explaining the game or like what yeah. you do well or don't do well, I think you would just be like, What are you saying? After a day where you go over oh, four with four punches, the only thing you want to do is just just hear silence. Like just let those I mean the spot checks at, at a one, yeah. one or two after four punches, you know, you're just walking back up. It's tough. Yeah. Tough scene. Oh it man. Is. Oh god. Um what's it called? Distance, you mentioned, actually. Oh. Distance. How do you deal with the distance, too? I mean, distance is a big factor in, in relationships, too. I would like to hear your input on that. I think communication, number one. I'm not a great communicator. I'm not the best at answering texts or FaceTimes, but Jack brought it out of me. He is a mm-hmm. great communicator. So we'll FaceTime multiple times a day, honestly. Text throughout the day. And I think, like, I mean, it only takes... 30 seconds to answer a text message and when I mean there's always a way like if you want to pursue a relationship if you care about the person there's always a way and making effort for that person and putting in that extra effort um and planning things to look forward to like we'll always plan trips and I mean you know, I would I was in a kind of lucky situation because even though I didn't have my car on campus his parents could drive me to the game so we would drive to Virginia Tech basically every weekend in the spring and then jack would sometimes come visit me i did do that a couple yeah times. he's a little crazy <laughs> long drives <laughs> i don't know there's a lot of travel too like I, know, I go on her trips and she comes and visits me all the time so and that's obviously not everybody has a chance to like just 
go out of school and do, do that, but she makes time. Um, and a lot of the travel she comes to see it, so it's, it's very good. Well, I mean, <laughs> you used to designate the time, FT time. <laughs> FT with FT KT. time with KT. <laughs> FT time. FT time. Yeah, I, I don't think his roommates would always love that. Jack no, they, going upstairs they just to go upstairs time. whenever. They, no, they told whenever. me. Whenever. <laughs> yeah, but whenever. When I, when I came, they told me that, Jack, you don't hang out with them because you face like me. <laughs> well, there's some things. Like, I would see them all day, and, like, I wanted to talk to my girlfriend because, you know, we recap and stuff, and, like, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> there's a good balance, like. You gotta have a good balance between the fellows, and you gotta have a good balance between you know your girlfriend. Like, I feel like that's a reasonable answer. Yeah, very valid. Yeah, like yeah, he, he knows too. You know, same boat. Yeah, distance. Yeah, you know, distance. There's, there's a difference between you know being lopsided. You don't want to give your boys all of the attention. You don't want to give her all the attention, even Aww. though she gets a lot of it. <laughs> you can give me all of the you, attention. <laughs> you gotta be able to balance. No, I like hanging out with your friends too. Yeah, and she'll she'll come over. <laughs> she will come over. With all the uh, all guy hangout, and she'll be there. And the, she's one of the boys. <laughs> I, I do. Well, she'll play Among I, Us with well, us. No, yeah, I will. The <laughs> best, uh, I think the best time when Katie came, we were, I was like, Jack, I don't care what you say. You told me we're hitting. And then uh, you're coming. <laughs> and Katie could come too. I don't really care. And I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Katie was on that Oculus for an hour. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was and nothing. We had nothing for an hour. We were like, if we just left, yeah. I think I think he'd still be. We would, we would be hitting in the other cage. She was just like on the virtual reality, just like swinging a bat. We'd be like, "What is going on?" But it so occupied difficult. her for like forty five minutes. And it I got was so hard. It was, it was great. Yeah, if that's anything like even close to what it's like. I don't know how you do it. I was missing every swing, and then finally I started getting like a couple singles. Didn't hit a homer, but I did get a triple. I don't think it's similar because. In my opinion, I don't think you'd ever get a single. <laughs> or ever even I could close. get a single. I, I was think, going to play softball. I don't think in my life. if she, not just you, I don't think there's a lot of people that can just go up there and get a single after an hour of work at baseball. I think I think I could. That's a hot take. I'm hot take. <laughs> and in college, and in college. That's a hot take. <laughs> no, I, okay. <laughs> like the stove. It's like you're, you put your hand on Oh my gosh, that's how hot I would take that. All right, well, I'm going to start training. Well, in a college atmosphere, you think you get a single? No. T-ball. T-ball. No. I that's not even a knock. Like, high I school I, level. I, don't, don't, high, I can do it at high school level. Yeah. Varsity? Yep. <laughs> All right, you heard it here for her. What about the test of theory? Test of the theory. I'll go throw 83, and then she'll see if you can hit it. No, no, no. Softball. Oh. Oh. Not baseball. Oh. It's still, though. Baseball. You gotta, like, that's a lot of work. A like, single knock? Okay, if I had an hour to just I don't think I'm baseball, gonna get a single in softball single. the first time I play. I'm like, right now? Yeah. I don't think I'm getting a hit. All right. Well, thanks for throwing away my dreams. <laughs> we could test the theory one day. Yeah, we could. Yeah, maybe. Part mm-hmm. two. Yeah. Um. Oh, another question about you said it didn't really matter. Jackson athlete, whatever. What are what are some benefits of dating a baseball player and an athlete? Um. I mean, I'm very attracted to someone that's driven and motivated, and someone that does have a schedule. So, I mean, Jack is a very hardworking person. I think it doesn't really matter if you play a sport or if it's in your career or whatever it is in your life. When you're motivated, I think, like, it's just it's attractive. And, um, I mean, there's definitely, like, perks to going to sporting events. They're fun. And they're, like, I mean, it was fun for – he would, like, leave for four hours before the game. And then we'd go to the game. And then we'd go to dinner. And then, like – Everyone would hang out at the house. I mean, it's fun. It's a good time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean. And Jack, how is it dating an influencer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, same thing. She's really motivated. She does, well, she does a ton of work, um, and she has a very specific schedule. So uh, it's like I said. Like she said, she was attracted to somebody who's motivated. I think I can say the same. Very cool. Nice. Go date an athlete. Girls out there. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> uh, Keep going with Jack. Jack. I was going to say, then I could get out of the camera too and you guys can speak if you want. Yeah, we get it. I have no time on this. Oh, Jack Hurley. 
<laughs> and we're not back yet. Okay, Jack. Here comes the nitty gritty. The nitty line, some might say. <laughs> that was tough. Um, <laughs> that was tough. Big year comes around. <clears throat> Just got done playing with Team USA. What was the experience like playing in Team USA? And Katie, question after that. Your, your boy right here playing for Team USA. How was that? He's a beast. <laughs> He's awesome. You went to the Netherlands. It was a good time. It was very fun. Um, I love my country, so it was cool to represent it. Um, very cool to wear USA across the chest. We played on July 4th, so it was even cooler. Um, in the United States, we played. So it was very fun. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, obviously playing for Team USA has got to be one of the best things, like, as a baseball player, playing for Team USA, I mean, there's nothing better than supporting your country. Mm -hmm. um, beast, huh? He's a beast. Where'd you get that nickname, man? Your your friend, he's got Slate. 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 Our team used to be called Beast too. Yeah. We used to call him. I don't know why. Like, I think I I just use that term a lot. Actually, you know Kevin Carcenter. He yeah. actually used that term a lot. Really? And I think I picked up on it too. And then, like, I'd use it at college, and they would. Somehow they just started calling me that. When you used to call me when I first met you, you're like, what's up, beast? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like a term, like, you just say, be like, yo, what's up, beast? Like, what's up? Like, it's just instead of saying, like, what's up, like, compliment the guy, like, what's up, beast? Like, this guy's <laughs> freaking a beast. Like, it's easy to say. All right. Give us um most demoralizing things you could say to a guy, oh, a baseball player. Or what's up, player. bud? <laughs> um, pal. What's up, pal? Pal, buddy. Buddy, uh, what's up, champ? Champs, what's up, stud. <laughs> like these are like pl like player to player. Like it's like what's up, champ? Like what's up, buddy? Like that's just not right. Buddy's up there. Buddy might be number one. What's up, yeah, I think buddy. That is very. Bud, good. Bud's up there. Buddy's tough. Bud, pal, pal, little guy. What's up, little man? Little man. What's up, little man? <laughs> What's That's up, a big little, guy. Little bro. Yeah, up, big man? big guy. If you're not like big, that's yeah. very offensive. Tough. tough leg instead of league. Leg, I don't know what kind of accent was that. A Virginia accent? It's just like a. I think I've heard that from a bunch of people. Like leg. It's tough leg. Like league. Tough leg. It's like what? <laughs> it's league, <laughs> not leg. Oh, okay. So, junior year, you go back, start off right. You, this is your draft year, right? There's a lot of there's guys coming from the draft, scouts coming to our practices. They see beasts taking beeps, right? Guys hitting the batter's eye like it's nothing. They're taking video, whatever. What was the process like for you? What about the meetings that you did? Like, what, what was that like? Um, the meetings, they were nerve-wracking at first. But then you have, like, a bunch of them. You get used to, like, kind of being in that atmosphere. But the meetings, they were tough. The... You put a lot of pressure on yourself. Like, I'm not going to lie, I put a ton of pressure on myself. I think a lot of people do. And even if they say they don't, there's a level of pressure that is put on your on yourself. Um, but <clears throat> trying to just hang out with the fellows and keep your mind off baseball was big for me. Um, and then when things weren't going good, which they weren't at the beginning of the season, uh, even more important to hang out with guys like this guy and go get extra reps in, just get your work in. But, you know, have people in your in your support system. So, like, in the fall, when you, um, you know, when all this stuff was happening and there's a lot of talk about the draft and you're probably hearing from a lot of guys, you know, um, how important was it, obviously, your friends, like you just said, mm -hmm. hanging out with your friends, and also off the field, right? Talking to your family and especially talking to Katie. How was that? Like, how much of a help was that to take your mind off? It's good because, you're like, you don't want to talk about baseball all the time. You want to get your mind away from the game. Like, you need to have an outlet. So, talking to Katie, talking to my parents like that was awesome uh, because like you, you don't want to think about certain things you don't want to think about something that hasn't happened yet and get get too far ahead of yourself um so it was great and then um all the guys at Virginia Tech awesome <clears throat> Katie for you you know that he's got a lot of pressure on him and you know this is a big year for him what were some of the things that you're able to help him with, like mentally, just kind of to keep him going, going through it, keeping his mind off of it. I mean, there's not much you can do, but just like encouraging him not to think about it and like 
how it's like, you know, it'll all work out the way it's supposed to. I mean, there's really like, when you have that amount of pressure on yourself, I mean, there's not much a person can help with other than, yeah, just being there and like us hanging out and going to dinner and just like time where you can spend away from baseball and away from all of that. That's probably always helpful. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. So what is, uh, okay, what is like the number one thing you don't want to say to, to Jack about <laughs> uh, like when it comes to baseball or just like after a game or whatever, like, things you want to stay away from, like mentioning, if any. Um, Strikeouts. <laughs> Punches. I don't know. Like, you almost had a bud. <laughs> I don't, I mean, like never, never like dismiss their, the way they're feeling. Because I don't know. I'm not in their shoes. So never like act like you know what they're feeling at all. Because chances are you don't. So <clears throat> really, yeah, saying nothing at all is sometimes better than saying a lot. She she has feel. So it's like she would, like, even if I would go, like, hey, if I, if I strike out like, a couple times, like, it's not going to be a good, good day. But, like, if you go for four, but you have four good at bats, like, nothing wrong with that. It's the game. Yeah, I've she was learned. able to like learn like, oh, he hit the ball hard three times. Like, he didn't get a hit. That's fine. Yeah, I've learned okay. what what to expect from Jack, depending on how he plays. I think a lot of like girlfriends of athletes can probably yeah they they know like like a lot of infielders. It's like errors. Like you make an error, it's like stay away from. That. Yeah, you're like yeah. they're not gonna be happy <laughs> after this. Yeah. Errors don't really happen in the outfield unless. Oh. Unless we're playing Clemson and I'm in center field. <laughs> and I'm going to hold on to the ball. And then I'm also going to drop one. Or if, like, I, I want to take a picture after the game, but he doesn't have a good game, I'm like, no yeah. no asking for a picture today. Yeah, it's always a, it's always a tough <laughs> one. I mean, I, I honestly have dealt with that. You know, someone, I had somebody, no name, after a game, had a couple punches myself. And um, I the, the statement was, you take it so seriously, it's not even that big of a deal. Like, why do you even care so much? And I'm just like, probably something you don't want to say. Yeah, don't. I, I don't even. I don't even know what to react to that. It's like, it's not like my whole life is dependent on what what I'm doing every single day here, right? Exactly. And you're gonna say something like that? How dare you? How dare you say something like that? It's great. It's just like, it doesn't even matter. Like, who cares? Don't say that. I'm just putting that out there. Um. But wow, like you're going through a season. I'm just thinking back now. You're going through the season and you start off, and the start wasn't great. <laughs> Tough start. Spot check. Two. Spot check was a two. Season didn't start off the way you wanted it to. And honestly, like the big pressure year, your junior year, you came off a season where you went really, you were really, really hot the whole year, basically. Um, and a lot of success with the team. You start off slow. Mentally, mentally, what were you going through, and how did you get out of that? I was just <clears throat> not playing my game, and I was putting all that pressure on myself to, you know, perform even better than I perform better. Like, I just was putting so much pressure on myself. And um, having the guys, like, whenever you, like, struggle was really important for me. Uh, and being able to, like, talk to people, like, just, like, my family, and just calling them just chatting about non-baseball things whenever you're hitting, like, a buck 20. Like, that helps. <laughs> that does help. <laughs> uh, but uh, realizing that and taking the positives out of everything, like, there was a weekend where I hit, I think, 10 balls over 100, and I had two hits. Like, it was just one of those weekends where that really sucks, and I can't do anything about that. Like, I'm talking, like, five lineouts in a row. Like, it just – can't catch a break, but taking the positives out and being like, okay, I did really good in this aspect. I hit every single ball hard. The results are going to come. It's just right now they aren't. So taking out positives was big for me. And eventually like that mindset of being positive, taking good things out ultimately ended up happening. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, then after that, like when you're struggling, like you had maybe the hottest stretch mm -hmm. I've ever seen in my life. I mean, you went, what, 13 homers in 12 games? Yeah, so, like, I just, I started. <laughs> 13 homers in 12 games. I started seeing the results, and, like, the results that 
I, I mean, I was hitting the ball well earlier on the year. I was striking out way higher at a way higher clip, but like I was still hitting the ball hard. Yeah. Like it wasn't like I was going out there and just rolling over every bat. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but finally seeing the results and like like you said, sometimes like you just find your home run swing. You just find that swing. And it's like I have muscle memory. Like I can feel that thing. And then you, you know, a pitch would come in and it would be the same pitch you just hit a home run on the day before. And it's like there it is again, home run swing. Bang. Your timing's good. Your swing's on. And then that two or three week period where it felt like everything was going right was because I had felt something that was correct and that worked for me and it all blended together. <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's awesome. That's I mean, we're going to get back to that story. Uh, I'm just going to cut it off right here quick to, to say thank you to Katie for uh, joining us. Chris, thank have anything you. to say? Yeah, Katie, um, we're, we're obviously pumped to have you on and the insights that you had uh, were great. If there are one thing that you would give advice to, Honestly, people that want to be in your shoes, want to be an influencer, what would be your tips for that? It's possible. I think you look at your favorite influencers or like creators and you see the success that they've had and you think like, there's no way I would ever get to that point. But I'm, I came from like a smallish town. Like there was no one doing it where I lived or where I was from and I didn't think it was possible, but if you work hard, you really can accomplish anything. And I think a big thing is also like talking to reaching out to people that are also doing it. Like I've had tons of people reach out to me about working in sports and I know like I'm very happy to give people advice. And I know there's all, probably other people that are doing what I'm doing that would also give advice. So yeah, talk to people and don't be afraid about what everyone else is saying. Cause everyone's going to have their own opinion about it. If you want to do something, you have to go for it. Because I mean, it's like a it's like YOLO mentality. You only live once. Like stop waiting. If you, I mean, yeah, there's you can do it later on, but why wait if you want to do it now? Perfect. YOLO. Right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we appreciate that. You're, you got like 15 minutes. <laughs> All right, Jack. <laughs> so back to your junior year. You you finish up. You have 17 bombs. Right, you're looking towards obviously the draft is coming up and stuff like that. What was that process like getting to the into the draft process and and uh, just kind of the feelings and the emotions going through after you know that mm-hmm. you've done what what you had to do? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like emotions that go into it, and it's hard to you think about it every day. So you're like the draft is like one, one day closer, or whatever, but nothing's actually happened yet. So like you know something's gonna happen, but nothing's actually happened. So it's hard to like really put a like a word or a feeling to describe it. A lot of nerves and stuff that went into it, and I mean everything happens for a reason. Dimebacks blessed to be with them. Uh, they gave me a great opportunity, and you know I just I'm gonna take advantage of it as much as I can. Yeah, no, I mean pro ball. Obviously, we've talked to a lot of guys who are on pro organizations, and they kind of say the same thing. They're blessed for the opportunity. They love being in their organization, and they say that pro ball is just different, you know, pro ball is different than college. Um, it's more of, you know, more of an individual game, people say, right? Mm-hmm. It's more of like an individual working, you you know, you have to find your own trainers and especially in the offseason, right? You have to find your own trainers, find your own facilities, um, have everything. You need to kind of take care of yourself in your career opposed to college where they have everything scheduled for you. Mm-hmm. How has that transition been? Yeah. I mean, college is, it's a lot of structure and so is Arizona, like the Diamondbacks where they have a ton of structure uh, and they, they do as much as they can. There's a lot of guys in the organization. So, I mean, there's hands-on stuff like in college too, but a lot of it's kind of figuring it, you're figuring it out on your own, um, realizing what you need to do. But I have a couple of great hitting coaches in that organization. They, they do a great job communicating with me and giving me feedback and tips. Uh, So, you know, that's, one thing that's very similar to college is there's great coaches. And then <clears throat> on top of that, I mean, the, the like the lifestyle is a little bit different because, you know, in college it's, you got class and, you know, you got other things you have to do. Uh, but in pro ball, it's just all, all baseball. So that's turned into my job. It literally is. Um, and it's everything I wanted. So, I mean, I love it. Uh, but yeah, it is, it's my job now. So I got to take it even more serious into college. <laughs> Jack, if you weren't playing baseball, what would you think you would be doing? 
If I wasn't playing, give me give me more okay. more to that. You're not playing baseball. Because why? I wasn't good enough or I didn't even like it. You're not playing baseball because it's not even a sport. It's not even a sport. Okay. okay. So there's no there's no opportunity for to play baseball. Okay. okay. You're you're just there's no sport. Okay. Yeah. I think I didn't play baseball. I think that I would have played another sport. And I think I would have realized pretty quickly you have to be really tall to play basketball. So it wouldn't have been basketball. Even though I did play basketball in high school, it wouldn't have been basketball. I think it would have been football. I think I would have tried to play football in college. Because I'm not the biggest guy. But if I trained the right way, I think I could maybe play like a division. I don't don't want to say division. I think I could play college football. I think I can play. I think I can play. I'm burning myself. And no, no, but take. not not like now. Not no. It might not be a hot take now. Like like I'm, I I can't play college football now. But I'm saying if that was my sport growing up, I think I could play college football. I think that's not a unreasonable thing to say. Okay, let me ask another question. No sports. No sports. Right. Taking sport that was kind of right where okay. I was going. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I'll go with football. We're going with the no sports. No opportunities of doing a sport. What would you be doing? Oof, I don't know. I think I would probably, uh, maybe. I mean, man, I don't know. Maybe I'd try to be like a chef or something because, I mean, I love eating, and being a chef would be very beneficial for myself because I can make great food. No. <laughs> Hey, well, that's what you say. Hey, that's well, what, you what, say. What, would, what would you be? What would you want to do? Well, I mean, you, you besides take away the college baseball, take away Sparver U, take away all of this stuff. What would you do? What would I do? Yeah. Without sports yeah. in general, what would I do? Mm-hmm. It's a really good question. I'll tell you one thing I would do. And I'm not going to be one of those guys say like, oh, you know what? I, I would do this because, you know, it's beneficial or whatever. No, I'll tell you exactly what I would do, okay? I would own and operate a McDonald's. It's okay. my favorite restaurant. Okay. And I would okay. love to do that every single day. Okay. Now, that's that's reasonable because I, I know how much you it. go there. I know how much you go there. Or either that or I'd honestly do, um, or, you know, like waste management. That would I'd, be, be. I'd, be, I'd be into waste management. I think that I would... uh. I would enjoy being mm-hmm. controlling waste man. Pretty smart. That's a pretty good idea. Maybe a little meat store, you know, like a deli. <laughs> that, I don't know. Or a club. I try, actually, no. What I would do is I'd try to be an inventor. Try to make my own products. Try to make like two products that like just hit big. Oh, so you're um, in the Arizona Diamondbacks, huh? Yeah. Just, just went to the World Series. The Diamondbacks team we got drafted by went to the World Series. Joe, my brother, mm-hmm. obviously just on here, has a, a lot of buddies that are on the Diamondbacks organization. Mm-hmm. You got Adrian Del Castillo. You got Slate Zaccone. These guys, obviously, they've been in the organization a little bit longer. Have you been able to meet these guys? Or... Mm-hmm. So right now I haven't because they were in the season whenever I got drafted. So yeah. when they were drafted, the big leaguers, AAA, double A, everybody, they were in a season. So I didn't get to meet any of the guys yet. So spring training, I'll meet a ton of guys, I'm sure, make good friends. But uh, I met a lot of the coaches and um, all the player development, and they're awesome people, awesome people. Yeah, we have um, obviously a couple years ago, was it two years ago, Drew Jones mm-hmm. drafted second overall to the Diamondbacks. Um, but yeah, I feel like you've known him a little bit, right? Yeah, he, he, uh, so after the season was over, we had instructs, which is like a three week, four week period where you go and work out. I lived with him and I lived with Landon Sims. Um, and we lived in the Airbnb, had a great time. We, uh, went to, it was just basically right outside of Scottsdale. It was a great time. What great weather, awesome pool. It was great. Awesome. No, it's, I mean, good dudes too. Great guys. I mean, the Diamondbacks are obviously a sick organization. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, obviously Corbin Carroll, number one guy there now. Yeah, he's, um, he's an absolute beast. Animal. 
there were comparisons between you and Corbin Carroll. That's that's what I've I've seen it. I've seen it before. The swings are very similar. Speed, I think he's got you. But uh, but he's got me by like eight steps. Swing, <laughs> swing might be there. You know, and yeah. you could be playing right next to him. That would be amazing. Yeah, he's it. a. I mean, it's been fun to watch him. It's been fun to watch their whole team. He's a guy, especially. It's awesome to watch because I mean, he's an outfielder. He's really tooled up. He's yeah. extremely fast. He uses the base running to his advantage. It's an awesome guy to learn from. I mean, there's obviously a lot of dudes that you've played with. Obviously, Team USA. You've played with a lot of guys that you know. We've kind of mutual friend mm-hmm. that played for Team USA that we were both oh, yeah. friends with and. Wow. Um, and you know, he was obviously another guy you could learn from, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, Wyatt, Wyatt Langford, stay tuned because Wyatt <clears throat> possibly coming on the pod. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I don't want to leak anything. Hey, hey, <laughs> early leaks, but no, Wyatt, obviously he was my roommate mm-hmm. for like 10 days in several months. And in those 10 days, I might've asked him a million questions because when he first came in, I wasn't really sure. I was just like, who is this guy? Let me mm-hmm. look him up. And I was like, 26. <laughs> That's literally about, I was like, 26, huh? 26 homers. 26 big ones. 26 knots. That's a lot of a lot of home runs. A lot of, a lot of homers in the SEC, and I was just like, i got to pick this guy's brain. And I literally asked him a million questions. Obviously, when he comes on, hopefully he comes on, mm-hmm. you'll be able to hear that. Mm-hmm. But back to you. You know that guy. Who's it? I think you saw him last week. Two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, saw Dylan. Saw Dylan Cruz in the uh... – at the SEC championship game, uh, he got recognized. I saw him before the game, and I was like, "Yeah, what are you doing here? Like, what's going on? Like, you don't you didn't go to uh, Alabama or Georgia? I didn't say that. Obviously, I was we were just talking. But later in the game, it's like first quarter, and he's just up on the on the big screen. I'm like, "Oh, that's probably why he's there." Uh, so he got recognized for being SEC Player of the Year, um, Athlete of the Year, I think, Male Athlete of the Year. Crazy wow. dude got drafted second overall. Absolute stud. Great dude. Um, but yeah, he's another guy, just unbelievable players. Take notes and, and sit back and watch him play. It's unbelievable. Wow, I mean that's uh, hey, he's a stud. Yeah, it's absolutely. GC, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I took <laughs> some, I took some stuff out of his playbook <laughs> midway through the year last year. Yeah. I was having trouble, um, you know, with uh, holding my my base. So I did, did a little DC. And he used to call me a uh, DC, and I'm like, you know, please don't call me, you know. DC look alike, you know, because like I'm older than them. That's a little demoralizing to me. We're the same age. Almost. Basically, it's like, come on, like this guy. We play the same, same com- like, not the same conference, but dude's an absolute. Beast. Oh, but like I was watching him, like, worse for him. Let me give it a shot. And, him and Wyatt, dude, those him guys, stuff, they're so. unreal. Yeah, they're me like, too. The, but they, those guys, <laughs> dude, the ball comes off their bat different. Like, just you've, you've seen it. Like, it just it's nuts. Absolutely great. It is insane. They're unbelievable baseball players. They're going to be great. And great Have dudes. long careers. Great dudes. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean, you'll, you'll find that a lot. Like, there's a lot of guys you play with and you talk to, and they're just great dudes like you. Like people watching this, right? Like people probably wondering, especially Hokie fans, like, what is Jack Hurley actually like? You know, people that know you, obviously, they know what you're like. But for people to say, wow, this guy's really good at baseball, like, he must just be like, out of the ordinary type of guy, but you're just not. You're just a you're a normal dude. You know, you're very personable. You're very nice, and people sometimes be like, "Oh, like it's crazy." Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I think that the insights that you have given us um, have really helped the viewers. The viewers are going to be able to gain this knowledge from from what you what you talked about, the struggles that you have, like everyone else, and. Um, yeah. Before we go any further, I I follow this guy on Instagram, and uh, I follow Talking College Baseball, and I see there's a pretty fairly new thing out right now called Spar Were You. Give me some. Give me what? What is it? Give me. Give me some information on that. Well, Spar Were You. Uh, what we did was actually the same type of philosophies that we were talking about, the same things that we were saying about how you got better, the drills that you were using. We built a, a school for kids just like just like how you were mm-hmm. and just like how I was, just how my brother was. You know, it's for players around the country 
to become the best player they possibly can be. We're empowering them to be their own coach and we're giving them all the resources they need to be the best player they can be. We are literally giving them everything they need. Like when I tell you we have hitting, we have any position fielding wise, we have the mental game, we have strength and conditioning, speed, nutrition, arm care, recruiting help. I mean, we have everything that a player needs to get into the position that you are in, the position that I was able to get into. And it's just like knowledge from all these guys. Like we've talked to so many dudes that are playing professional baseball and they were helping me get insights on things that they do, things they think about, drills they do. So what we did was we put it all into one place and we're giving it to people who are willing to become the player they want to become. Okay, because there's, as you know, there's no shortcut to getting to where you want to get to. You need to be able to be willing to do everything it takes to become the best player you possibly can be. Would you agree? I, I 100% agree. I've seen some of the drills and stuff in, in Sparber U. I mean, I follow the Instagram account, so I know I know what it's all about. It's awesome stuff. I mean, there's a lot of good information in that course, and I think there's a lot of beneficial things that can come if you join, join Sparber U. I mean, there's a lot of great drills, great teachings. <clears throat> Yeah, man, I appreciate that. You know, I just try to, what I try to do is give everyone that is willing to do it the same things that I wish I had when I was coming up. Because if I had these things, my path would probably have been a lot smoother. I would have knew exactly what these professional players are thinking on a daily basis and the same drills that they are doing currently. I mean, there is no, like, there's no shortage of baseball knowledge out there. Right, you get base not baseball knowledge out there. There's no shortage of it, but there is a shortage of the right knowledge that you need to have. If you want to play elite baseball, you need to have the same knowledge that elite players are doing every single day. You have to know exactly what they're doing, how they're planning their day, how they're scheduling their day. Right? You need to know their routines, their drills, and I guarantee you, I don't know who said it. I think it was Tony Robbins. If you want to be in a position. If you want to be some someone that is doing something great, and if it's in baseball, if it's in business, if it's in anything, anything out there, you find someone or some a whole bunch of people that have done what you want to do, and you copy exactly what they did. And if you do that, you will be successful. And it's the same thing we're giving in Sparta Yield. We're giving you the same blueprint that, pro that professional players have done and high-level college baseball players have done and you're going to be able to follow that step by step. We are able to walk you through every single lesson and drill in that course. We are giving you a hands-on experience from guys who, who have done it. Okay? You're going to have everything to your disposal. And that's, that's what Sport Review is about. We are literally putting the power into the kids' hands, giving them the knowledge they need to get to the level they want to get to. I love it. I love it. Good stuff right there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's kind of like the reason we like coming on here and talking to professional baseball players is because we want to know, we want to gain the insight from them. And if we can hear hands on what they're thinking, what they have done. You know, I mean, I currently still play and I'm still pursuing that <laughs> goal of becoming a professional baseball player. And it's not easy. And I love talking to pros and they say it all the time. It was never easy. And then with those insights, we're able to take that and put it directly into Sparta U. And with the, everyone's insights as being a professional, it is all combined into Sparta U, and you're going to have everything you need to know. So that's why we we do the podcast that we do, mm -hmm. obviously, to get insights, to help more kids out. We want to be able to you know, tell kids that, like, hey, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, You went from a guy that had 222 in high school – and then now you're third round pick for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Okay? I mean, that stuff is it's crazy. I personally was a 250 hitter in high school. <laughs> I went to JUCO and hit 26 big ones. Okay? <laughs> but like, I was able to become an ACC baseball player from not getting any offers out of high school. Okay? It, these things are possible, but you need, you. I'm going to say, you need the guidance and you need somebody to hold your hand. Through this process, okay? You can't go about it saying, oh, I'm already good enough. I already have the knowledge. 
I have this hitting coach. I have that hitting coach. I have this organization helping me. No, you need somebody that is doing it. Someone that is continuing to do it. Guys that are in the pros, guys that are currently playing to help you get to where you want to get to. Because we know what it takes. We still do it every single day. And that's the difference. Okay, we are able to walk you through everything you need. Without a doubt, we've put the most current and up-to-date and the best knowledge into Sparview into one place for you to have. So that's what that's what really we are built on. We are built on giving people the right knowledge. Right on. I think it's <clears throat> yeah. You learn from like at Virginia Tech, I learned from guys who were better than me, and I learned from guys that I wanted to be like, and I took notes from them and helped me in a, in a big way. And you know, let me ask you about your. And I want you to be completely honest. I want you to be completely honest with this response. I have a two part. The first one is working with me when we used to work in the cage. Was I helpful or was I not helpful? What insights did you take from when I worked with you? I mean, it was, <clears throat> you were always working. So I knew any time that I needed to go into the cages, I could call you up and be like, oh, let's go swing. Let's go get some extra work in. And you'd always be there. And we would collaborate with our brains. We'd put them together. And we're not like the smartest guys. But whenever it comes to baseball, we have, I mean, some pretty similar ideas. And it was really good to talk to a guy. Uh, that was on the same level as myself and just being able to just learn and also, you know, help out somebody. So he, he would help me out. I would help him out. It was like a mutual thing. I mean, that's, you go and hit with somebody, you got to learn from them somehow, but they're also going to learn from you too. So having somebody in that position was awesome. And the second part of that question, why do you think professional baseball players and what do you think they'll benefit coming on to talk to college baseball because I, I hope you had a great time. Let me, yeah. let me hear Like, did you have a good time yeah. here? It was a fun time. I mean, we had a great conversation. We touched on a ton of points. Um, I mean, my girlfriend was here too. So she, she had a good time. Um, it was just cool. Uh, I love watching podcasts. I'm a, I'm actually a pretty big podcaster. I like, uh, the Kelsey brothers podcast, a good one. Um, and it, I mean, why not? It's, it's a good time. You, get to look back on some fun memories and there's going to be some great clips from this one. Do you think other uh, baseball players and other people should come on to this podcast? Why not? What's, what's holding you back? Well, you give an hour of your time and help build something that's pretty cool. All right, Jack, one thing that we always ask our guests, if you had one piece of advice that you can give to your younger self, or to a younger player out there, what would it be? <clears throat> hmm. There's a lot of things out there that I would say, but I think one for me would be, especially to the younger kids out there, <clears throat> the guys that are playing um, travel ball and all that stuff, coming up, if you're between the ages of nine years old and 17 years old, right before you get to college, the stuff that you're doing right now, it's very important to build very good habits, but a lot of it doesn't matter as much as you think it does. And <clears throat> even myself now, you have a big microscope on yourself. Uh, and to zoom out and look at the big picture, it's hard to do that in the now. But I think whenever you are putting a lot of pressure on yourself, a lot of that stuff doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Um, and I was the same way. I would put so much pressure on myself and looking back on it, whenever I struck out in 10th grade, like, did it matter? No, it didn't matter, but it felt like it did. Um, and just realized that it doesn't matter as much as you think it does, because it's always going to get better. You keep working at it. You're going to get better. Well, that's great. I mean, that, I mean, that's everything we wanted to talk about. Um, another question I have, why do you think, High school kids, high school baseball players should learn and join Spark Why? Why? Um, do you think they should? I think, I mean, I don't think there's any reason to not. I think there's a lot of valuable information in Spark U. I personally have seen a ton of clips and a ton of videos that is in there from hitting to outfield work, which relate most to me. 
uh, and I think a lot of those drills are great. There's a lot of hitting drills on there specifically that I've done before uh, and that I can relate to and that I would suggest. So I think there's a ton of things that kids can learn from, especially younger guys that are still trying to find their way in baseball. Thank you. I mean, I don't know what you're waiting for. You you got to join sport for you. You want to be like Jack Hurley in the pros, join sport for you. You will get there. We guarantee it. <laughs>